What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Lazy Player's Guide to 99 Thieving. In this guide, I'm going to be showing you guys a very simple and very straightforward way to get yourself to 99 Thieving without much effort at all. But as usual, I'm still looking for the best loot tabs in old school runescape send them over my way to the email address right here and they will have a chance to get featured in a loot showcase video if you're looking for some pvp activity or just some new friends to hang around with you can check the description below it always has my clan chat information and my discord information so you can join up if you have nothing better to do or just want to make some new friends but with that let's go ahead and get into the lazy player's guide to 99 thieving In my opinion, thieving is one of the more relaxing skills due to the fact that most of it can be done by simply spam clicking an NPC. With that being said, the majority of this guide will be centered around pickpocketing an NPC that is available in RuneScape because it's not only easy, but for most of the thieving skill can be done while paying very little attention. First thing is first though, I want to get into the quests which will reward you with thieving experience upon their completion. There is actually quite a few of them. At the time of this guide being made, there is 24 quests which will directly reward thieving experience. I'm not going to read them all off because that would take a bit of time, but if you'd like to pause the video to check them out, please do so. From these 24 quests, your total thieving experience gained would be 123,512 XP. A decent amount of experience to be gained, but it's not completely necessary. There are, however, a few quests which we will want to focus on when getting started with the thieving skill. I will cover those in a bit. For now, though, I'd like to cover a few tips and tricks and just general information about the thieving skill. First thing I will cover is going to be how to reduce your failure rate when you're pickpocketing. There are two viable ways to do this. The first one is going to be using a pair of gloves of silence. These gloves, when worn, increase your pickpocketing success rate by 5%. You will need a hunter level of at least 54 to wear them, but that's not too steep of a requirement. The gloves generally go for around 3,200 GP on the Grand Exchange, or can also be made at the fancy clothes store with two dark kebet furs for a cost of 600 GP. Little tip for you iron memes out there, assuming you're on the lower end of the thieving skill, you will want to have multiple pairs of gloves. After 62 pickpocketing failures, these gloves will degrade and you'll need a new pair. I will note here, before your gloves completely degrade, you can use one dark kebet fur and thread on a pair of gloves to restore them to their new condition. Personally, I would just take more pairs with me so I don't have to bank and stop and fix them. I can just throw a new pair on and keep going. The second way to increase your odds of a successful pickpocket is going to be the Ardoin Cloak 2 or higher. Different tiers of the cloak will mean different pickpocketing perks. As for the cloak's bonus, the cloak will increase your odds of a successful pickpocket by 10%. However, this does not stack with the Gloves of Silence. The 10% from the Ardoin Cloak will override the 5% from the Gloves of Silence, making the gloves obsolete once you've completed the Ardoin Medium Diaries. If you have the Ardoin Medium Diaries completed, you will only get the increased success rate while in Ardoin. It will not work anywhere else. Assuming you only have the stats to complete the Medium Diary, which you can see on the screen now, you won't necessarily need to go any higher than this for this guide, as most of the thieving experience we will be getting will be in Ardoin. However, if you do have the hard or elite diaries completed, this 10% bonus will extend to the rest of Gilinor. I also want to note here that you do not have to have the cloak equipped or in your inventory to grant this bonus, just have the diary done and that will be enough. Next up is going to be the Dodgy Necklace. The Dodgy Necklace is an enchanted necklace created using a silver bar and a cut opal. It requires 16 crafting to make and 7 magic to enchant, but more conveniently can be bought on the Grand Exchange for about 900 GP if you're not an Iron Man. This necklace, while equipped, will provide a 25% chance to prevent you from being stunned and damaged while pickpocketing NPCs, and that's only if you fail, obviously. Each necklace has 10 charges and will use one charge each time the necklace successfully prevents you from being stunned. Depending on the NPC you're stealing from, one necklace can prevent anywhere between 10 and 50 damage, as well as 40 to 60 seconds of being stunned. Throughout the lower thieving levels, this necklace can be incredibly useful, as well as being a great time saver. The last thing I'll talk about before we get into the leveling guide is going to be the rogues equipment. Rogues equipment can be obtained from the Rogues Den minigame, which is located underneath of the pub in Berthorpe. This minigame can be accessed at level 50 thieving and will grant a 1 in 8 chance at getting a piece of the rogues outfit when you successfully complete a round. 
Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is because thieving isn't a very profitable skill when just pickpocketing to 99. If you do happen to have the full set or feel like getting the full set, it will double your profits to 99. If you have pieces of the set but haven't completed it, you'll still have the chance of pickpocketing twice the loot from an NPC, while the full set will guarantee double loot. So if you're looking to make the most from thieving while using this guide, I do suggest getting the set. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the leveling guide. A great thing about thieving is that some of those really annoying early levels can be knocked out by doing a few quests. Earlier on in the thieving skill, there is a lot of failing, a lot of getting stunned, and just a lot of general annoyance and slowness. Most of the quests are important for later quest lines as well, so you'll essentially be killing two birds with one stone here. The first three quests you'll want to do are Biohazard, Hazel Cult, and Fight Arena. Each of these three quests have no specific skill requirements and can easily be done on lower level accounts without much of a hard time. The next one is going to be the Tower of Life. This quest does have a level 10 construction requirement, but that is not too bad at all. Just head over to your house, slap a few chairs together, and you're good to go. The next quest you'll want to do is going to be the Tribal Totem quest. This quest does have a thieving level requirement of level 21, but if you do the previous four quests I mentioned, the experience gained from the quest rewards will put you just over level 21. After completing Tribal Totem, you will then gain another 1,775 thieving experience, putting your total thieving experience at 7,200. At 7,200 experience, you will be level 24 thieving, and as usual, if you're in need of a guide for any of these five quests, you can check the description below for both written and video guides. Now there are a few more quests that have relatively low requirements, but they do have other skill requirements. If you've got the stats for them, I say go ahead and knock them out. They are the Queen of Thieves, the Giant Dwarf, Death to the Dorgashan, the Golem, Creature of Fenkenstrain, and the Feud. Completing these six quests will grant you an additional 22,500 thieving experience, which will in turn boost you up to level 37 thieving, putting you at a pretty decent spot to get started. Although the questing does take some time, and most likely might take a bit more time to get to level 37 than just training thieving, like I said earlier, most of these quests are needed for later quest lines, so it is just a good idea to get the thieving experience as well as get the quests out of the way earlier if you're able to. But as for this guide, I'm actually going to get it started at level 24 thieving. Our next goal for thieving is going to be at level 25 thieving, so we will be making a quick stop at the cake stalls in the Ardoin market to get a bit of experience. So from level 24 to level 25, and we will be assuming that we're starting off with 7,200 thieving experience after the completion of those quests that I mentioned. As for the location, Ardoin Market, you'll be stealing cakes, you'll need to steal 41 cakes, you will get 16 experience per successfully stolen cake, and you'll need to get a total of 642 experience. As for the XP per hour, you can see somewhere around 19,200. The time spent just to get from level 24 to 25 is going to be about 5 minutes. As for the profit, I'm going to say none here because you'll probably just drop them when you're done. As a side note, if you're going to be stealing cakes at any point when thieving, you'll want to do it exactly where I am standing in the video clip, the eastern cake stall, and I am standing on top of the baker. This will hide you from the Ardoin guards, who will stop you from thieving if they see you stealing from any of the stalls. At level 25, we can jump over to the Hosidius house and steal from fruit stalls. This does require 15% Hosidius favor, but that is very easily gotten in a short amount of time. If you need some information about gaining Hosidius house favor, you can check the description below for a link to the OSRS wiki. This method does grant the fastest thieving experience up to level 45 thieving, and from 45 to 55 the experience rate is still pretty close to other methods around this level, so I suggest hanging out here all the way until level 55. Once you get into a rhythm of thieving here, the experience goes by pretty quickly as the stalls will respawn just as you're stealing from the opposite stall. You'll also want to be using the fruit stalls over to the east as there is nothing guarding them. Over in the market square there are three guard dogs which will interrupt you, causing an XP per hour loss if you don't get them stuck behind something. So as for the location, you'll be in the Hosidius house, you'll be stealing fruit from the fruit stalls, as for the amount, 5,572 successfully stolen fruits from each of the stalls. They grant 28.5 experience each time you steal something. You'll need a total of 158,794 experience. As for the XP per hour, it can vary. Around 40,000 experience per hour if you're stealing from both stalls. If you decide you only want to steal from one stall, it's about 33,000 per hour. As for the time spent, and this is going to be assuming you're stealing from both stalls, it's going to be about 4 hours. 
And as for the profit, I'm gonna suggest that you drop everything, so you will make no profit here. Now, from level 55 to 99, we will be strictly at the Ardoin Knights. And this is a very long stretch from level 55 to level 99. It might be long, but the method is definitely worth it. This is exactly how I got 99 thieving. I've got a couple of tips for y'all for this point. Tip number one, on your interface, go to the right of the logout button. You'll want to open up your options. From here, you will then want to click on the little red joystick at the top right. In this menu, you will see the NPC attack options. You will want to set this to hidden. When pickpocketing NPCs that only have an attack or pickpocket option, you'll be able to left click the NPC to pickpocket instead of the two step process of right clicking and selecting pickpocket. This makes it so you'll be able to stand in one spot and just spam click whenever you are pickpocketing from an NPC with only those two options for the maximum experience per hour. My second tip for you is the safe spotting of the Ardoin Knights. There is two ways you can do this. One, if you have your own alternate account that is able to splash mage the knight, or two, using one of the clan chats or official world for thieving. The official world for this is world 378, but this can generally become a fiasco as it's not very organized and can get disrupted very easily. There are also two clan chats you can access to find a world where it's a good bit more organized. The clan chats are Thieving Host and Splash Worlds. Both of these CCs offer worlds where players are splashing on an Ardoin Knight to keep it aggressive towards said player. The reason that this is important is because after a certain amount of time, the knights will despawn and return to their original roaming area. This is a mechanic of the game and it cannot be changed. If the knight is aggressive toward a player actively engaging the knight in combat, the knight will not despawn and will remain in the same location indefinitely. Also, it's generally a decent gesture to give the splasher a tip here and there for helping everyone out. As of an update some time ago, when pickpocketing NPCs, you will be awarded with coin pouches. These do stack in your inventory, but you will only be able to have a maximum of 28 of them at a time. You will simply click the stack of coin pouches once and then continue thieving. And now onto the experience rates. As for this method, the experience rates do vary depending on your thieving level. So I'll start at the bottom at level 55 and work my way up. Another quick tip from what I mentioned earlier, it is very beneficial to have the Ardoin Medium Diaries done and be using the Dodgy Necklaces while thieving from Ardoin Knights as you will not stop failing the pickpockets until level 95. It should be noted, you will only stop failing at level 95 with the Ardoin Medium Diaries completed. From level 55 to level 70, your location is Ardoin, depending on where, could be wherever the safe spot is, it's generally at the southern bank. As for the items stolen, it's going to be coin pouches, and there is 50 GP in each coin pouch. As for the experience, you will get 84.3 experience every time you pickpocket an Ardoin Knight. You will need a total of 570,991 experience to reach level 70 from 55. Your XP per hour is going to be around 60,000. You will need 6,774 successful pickpockets. Time you will spend about 9.5 hours. As for profit, 338,700 GP without the Rogue's Outfit and with the Rogue's Outfit, 677,400 GP. From level 70 to level 80, the location, the item stolen, and the experience per pickpocketed knight will remain the same. As for the experience from level 70 to 80, 1,248,441. As for XP per hour around level 70, jumps up to 105,000 per hour. From level 70 to 80, you will need to pickpocket 14,810 knights. Time you'll spend doing this about 12 hours. As for profit, 740,500 GP without the rogue's outfit. And with the rogue's outfit, 1,481,000 GP. From level 80 to level 95, location, item stolen, experience per pickpocket a night, still the same. As for XP from 80 to 95, 6,785,690. Experience per hour jumps up to 150,000 XP per hour. The amount you will need is 80,493 pickpocketed nights. The time you will spend doing this, around 45 hours. Profit is going to be 4,024,650 GP without the Rogue's Outfit, and with the Rogue's Outfit, you're looking at 8,049,300 GP. And on the home stretch from level 95 to level 99, if you have the Ardoin Medium Diaries done, you will not have to worry about failing the pickpockets anymore. Once again, location, item stolen, and experience per pickpocketed knight remains the same. XP from 95 to 99, 4,262,873. As for XP per hour, 250 thousand that's not bad at all that's 
rivals Pyramid Plunder, and it also rivals the Men of Fight Thugs, if you know what either of those are. As for the amount, you will need to successfully pickpocket 50,568 times. The time you'll spend doing this, around 17 hours. Profit is going to be 2,528,400 GP without the Rogue's Outfit, and with the Rogue's Outfit, 5,056,800 GP. All right, so that's gonna do it. Thieving can be done very simply and with a very minimal amount of effort. There are other methods out there which can offer better experience per hour, such as pyramid plunder or blackjacking at the Men of Fight Thugs. But these require considerably more attention than the methods that I have mentioned in this guide. And obviously, if you're watching this guide, you're trying to be lazy. But as usual, I do have a quick recap of the totals that we're looking at from getting level one to level 99 thieving by following this guide. As for the total time spent, you're looking at somewhere between about 88 and 92 hours from level 1 to 99, and that is including the time it would take to do those 5 quests at the beginning of the guide. Since the bulk of this guide is thieving from Ardoin Knights, I'll also mention that you need to successfully pickpocket a knight 152,645 times from level 55 to 99, but since you're rewarded with 50 GP on each pickpocket, you're looking at a total profit of 7,632,250 GP without the rogue's outfit and 15,264,500 GP with the outfit. Not to mention, you'll also have a decent chance at getting the thieving pet as well. The chances are right around 60%. All in all, your journey to 99 thieving could net you around 170k GP per hour throughout the duration if you choose to follow this guide. And that brings us to another close of a lazy player's guide to 99 video i hope that this video has helped you out and i hope that you may have learned something that you didn't know before or maybe it's just an alternate method that you might have the choice of doing so if you like this video please leave a thumbs up down below they really do help the video's popularity and if you haven't done so yet you can tap the subscribe button it's right down there in the bottom right corner or at the end screen if you have your ad blocker turned on maybe you can consider becoming a channel member it helps support my channel and bring new content to you guys as much as possible so as usual thank you for watching guys i will see you next time take it easy everybody